Mo and Mike again. Yes. You'll get your shot here in a moment. Go ahead. It's your show. You, many, many years ago, I would say that I was... Um, I'd been wrestling for maybe two or three years. Officially. Unofficially. Well over a decade. But anyway, I was having this show, and it was in Oregon, and I had to wrestle this luchador who spoke no English. And I just felt, to be fair, I should speak no Spanish. <laughs> we didn't speak the same language. So, he told me, mover, move. No mover, don't move. That was how we built this entire match. It's like we had a couple of spots, and then that's all we could say to each other, was either move or don't move. And even though we worked a totally different style, and we didn't speak the same language... I'm not going to say like it was a great match or anything like that, but everything worked out fine. We did a match. Everybody was happy. Blah, 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 blah. I realize that there are things that Keith Lee doesn't do great, okay? But I have seen Keith Lee have many great matches. Now, obviously, when he had those great matches, he wasn't working a WWE main event heavyweight style. Because you know what? That's not his forte. It's not my company. If Vince decides there's one way that this Keith Lee needs to work, and it's the same way that everybody else works at his size, and he doesn't know how to do it, so he needs to learn how to work, whatever. It's not my company. I feel that given that I have seen Keith Lee have very good matches with all sorts of different people, Given that everybody who's ever wrestled, I shouldn't say everybody, anybody who's any good that has ever wrestled has been able to have a good match with somebody that didn't work the style that they're used to, it seems to me like you should be able to make this work with Keith Lee. Otis, I loved Otis. I was a huge fan of Otis. No. Otis doesn't work a classic WWE style. Otis did things that I couldn't believe he got away with. His gimmick is he's a big, huge, fat guy. And do not get on me for fat shaming or anything. That's his gimmick. He deliberately rubbed his belly and shook it. And he would go out there and, yes, he's not The Rock. He's not Stone Cold Steve Austin. But he'd get in there and he'd run dudes over. And then they'd get a little heat on him and he had a great face. And then he'd fire up and he'd start dancing. He'd shake his gut. And then, remember when he used to get ready for the caterpillar? And he'd start going. <laughs> and he would slap his chest as he backed up to the corner. And the fans would go. <laughs> and they'd clap along with it. It was awesome. Have you watched Otis lately? Uh, bro, you can't do this anymore. <laughs> Not allowed. Now you just look around and you start backing up to the corner. The th we'll turn on the Thunderdome cheering really loud. There's a lot of stuff that Otis used to do that he doesn't do anymore. And you know what? He was way more fun back when he did that stuff that he doesn't do anymore. Because he was different. I don't need everybody to work the same. I don't need Keith Lee to work like Kurgan or whoever big guy you're thinking of. Everybody's got different strengths. Everybody's got different weaknesses. If Keith Lee can't throw a great punch, then maybe he shouldn't be throwing punches. Why are we trying to teach him how to punch or whatever it is that you don't like about Keith Lee? I don't even have that big of a problem with it. And I can actually kind of say, in some ways, as much as people are upset about this, I mean, in some ways you should probably be happy because the fact that they want him to train, it means that they actually want to do something with the guy, but they don't like what he's doing right now in that position. I was ranting about Billy Kay and how they're not sending Billy Kay back to learn how to work. But you know what? They ain't going to do anything with Billy Kay. They're barely doing anything with her now. So that's the big difference right here. Clearly, they want to do something with Omos. They want to do something with Keith Lee. They want to do something with Otis. But they don't work the way that they want them to work. And so now it's time for them to learn how to work that way. My problem is that shouldn't be a necessity. You should let everyone be different and do different things. I'm positive 
that Keith Lee could do something approaching a traditional Keith Lee match and not kill everybody in WWE. He doesn't need to do a crazy dive and squish everybody. There's stuff that he can do that will get over, but he's never, not one time, have you seen more than like one or two spots in a Keith Lee match that was something that he used to do to get over, and now it's like, that's your limit. Mr. Limitless, your limit is two things that will get you over. Now we got to teach you how to do the traditional stuff. You're a baby face. You got to sell, sell, fight. Uh, uh. Whatever. That's my speech. Whatever. It's their company. They can do what they want. Be happy. At least they seem to want to do something with the guy. Even if they think that what he does sucks. It probably does suck. If I had to go to WWE and work their style, I'd probably suck too. More. Go ahead, Mike. Well, I guess we'll just throw in the other names there along with those three that you mentioned for those who didn't hear. But Daba Kato and Dio Madden are supposedly part of that unit as well, too. All large men. Now, my question is, Dio Madden has been in the system for how long now? Dude, like seven years or something. Former NFL player at the very least, a former college football player. Uh, been around a long time now. He, you haven't trained him up to I, I just I I don't know we'll see what happens and maybe this is a good thing like you like you mentioned in, in some ways because one a guy like Keith Lee or Otis won't be ripped apart on TV but also because Vince likes big guys and we got the Royal Rumble coming up and you know it may be you know Night of the Living Dead with the monsters or something like that with Vince if that's what he's deciding to do if he's looking at ratings or thinking that he has a plan where he's going to have all these monsters in there but we'll see you know we'll see how this thing goes I'm not it just kind of blew me away because with Keith Lee like I don't want the guy flying around like he was on the indies like he was in matches with Dijak but those are two great examples of why are you limiting these guys? You know, why Dijak was always a, a solid promo. You know, he's got a, a marketable look. He's not a, a hideously ugly guy or anything where you need to cover him up. But you had this idea for retribution. And, you know, God forbid you're going to cram this thing through, even though it's not helping him at all. Keith Lee, same thing. You take things away from him. You don't give him big victories. You don't feature him as something special. And then you're wondering why it's not working. Well, I, I I think the answer is pretty obvious, but we'll have to see how it goes here and what they decide to do. Um, you know, Omos and Dabakato, again, both those guys have been there for a little while, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, those are big men who were never going to fly around. So what are they supposed to be learning right now? What are they supposed to be doing? I mean, why was Dabakato a draft pick if you had no idea what you were going to do with him? Why was he, you know, it just, there's a lot that happens there that I just kind of shrug and shake my head at. And again, like you mentioned, it's not my company. This person says, sending Keith Lee to the PC to teach him how to wrestle, it's like sending Michael Jackson to dance school so he can learn how to moonwalk. No, what it would be is if he did the moonwalk and he was told that that's not how you dance, so we've got to teach you the foxtrot. That's what we're talking about here. Or it could be like you sign a guy, you know, because he's a great tap dancer, and then you say you want him to to dance the foxtrot. I mean, look at yourself with some of the people that they've signed. I mean, going back to, I mean, just look at Mystico. When Mystico was signed, now granted, he had other issues that, you know, we saw develop as far as attitude or whatever, but you sign a guy like that and then you decide not to utilize him or you don't like the way he worked. Ricochet, same way. Chad Gable, same way. I mean, there are so many examples of this where it's like, what did you hire these guys for in the first place then if, if this is what it was going to be? Or why did you call them up? I mean, it's just... I don't know. It just it makes you scratch your head. But, you know, I again, this this is not the end for Keith Lee. I certainly wouldn't believe. And I know people are really upset about this, but hopefully it works out to be a a plus on the other side. One can hope. This person here says, I know everybody is mad about Vince telling Keith Lee to go and learn how to work and deservedly so. But what about Otis? Him being on that list is equally baffling. He's a legitimate former collegiate wrestler. Yeah, that's the funny part, too, about all that is you got a guy with that kind of balance and that kind of strength. I mean, he's not just some fat guy like Bastion Booger. He's an incredibly strong guy, and you can't figure out a way to play that into his character and make it work. I mean, I just, 
they make things too difficult because, again, they want to shake up the snow globe. One guy does and sees people in his vision, in his vision alone. And unfortunately, his vision is obviously not the vision of the people that continue to watch these shows, possibly unless you're around his age. All these people talking about the foxtrot. Geeks want to know how I know about the foxtrot? Because when I was young, I believe it was Granny, actually. Might not have been Granny, but one of my old relatives had a they had one of those uh, electric pianos or whatever. And you know what I'm talking about? Player piano? Whatever. But anyway, they had all of these different settings where you could click a button and it would do like a certain beat or whatever. And then you played the piano to it. And one of them was Foxtrot. That's how I know about it. No. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.